So when I was 19 years old, I started my investing journey. And I started with around $10,000. Now, I don't know about you guys, okay? But you ever had somebody that you actually looked up to a lot and you thought they were so cool and then later on you realize that maybe that person did not know what they were talking about? Well, in this video, I'm gonna tell you about my first mentor when it came to investing into stocks. And he helped me turn $10,000 into around $11,500. And you're gonna say, Tommy, you are so ungrateful as a mentee. The answer is no, I could have turned that money into into over a hundred thousand dollars just by doing nothing but his advice was bad so the whole goal of this video is as I learned so much about the stock market and invest in form better mentors like Warren Buffett Peter Lynch Benjamin Graham David Dodd and all of these Philip Fisher all of these interesting investors I've learned so much and I've learned that that advice was terrible. And I also learned that the only thing that made me that 15% gain at the age of 19 was I got extremely lucky, but there was no math <laughs> whatsoever behind my strategy at all. So in this video, I hope to give you advice to avoid all the pitfalls that I fell for, but thankfully I got super lucky and got out unscathed, okay? Well, I did lose like $90,000, so I think I paid for my mistakes in money. So you don't want that either, okay? Now as always guys, like this video, on top of that also, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to get notified. I have more content coming out about investing and also passive income. Now, the very first advice my mentor gave me was, you always wanna buy an IPO. Now, my advice to you is never buy an IPO. And he, took, and he told me basically, Tommy, the IPO is the initial public offering, okay? That's when a company goes from being private to now they want to be public to raise capital. Now, usually, the initial public offering price is super low compared to what it could be in the future, right? And he used an example of saying, hey, Tommy, imagine if you invested into Apple before it was Apple, but what he didn't know was that basically this whole logic of the early bird gets the worm is basically not true because in Wall Street, they basically poison that worm. So if you're early, you might die. What you wanna do is stand back, see what happens. If everybody's okay, then you go and get your worm, okay? That's the logic here. Now let me tell you exactly why an initial public offering is not a good idea for an investor. Now, whenever you're trying to buy a company, what you mostly want is basically a wide history of this company. And we get this history from looking at, for example, the financial statements. Now, whenever you have an initial public offering, this company has very flimsy history. You don't know the history of the earnings. You don't really have all the facts you need to make an educated investing decision. Now, that's the first part. You have a lack of information. Now, now, the second part is basically when you have an initial public offering, do you know who's trying to promote the heck out of that stock in order to actually get some money from it? It's Wall Street. Wall Street makes a bunch of money in commissions and they don't care who the company is, what they do. All they want to do is get their bonuses and everything else. Okay. So what they want to do is push, 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 push. And it's not about if it's a good investment, it's just about what they're going to get into their pocket. So you want to avoid it because usually the thing that's being most promoted is usually the thing you want to avoid because it might be overpriced. Now, number three is basically when it comes to initial public offerings of the modern field, a lot of them are companies that have very, very crazy dreams in the future about a lot of growth, a lot of profit, but right now they have no profits. They're basically unprofitable companies, and that's not what you want. Investing into a company that has bad history is being, well, lack of history is being promoted like crazy and on top of that is unprofitable is absolutely ridiculous so what i would recommend to you is whenever you see another public offering stay back just look for a second because even if you waited 10 years to buy walmart after when public, you still would have, for example, 30 extra money if you would have bought 10 years later, right? So you wanna have everything checked out before you go ahead and make a speculative decision, okay? Now, number two, guys, is, and I'll be honest with you, when this happened to me, I was very, very upset, okay? And the idea was, my mentor told me, Tommy, you have to have rules, okay? Whenever the stock goes down by 15%, you sell. Whenever it goes up by 15%, you sell, okay? You profit, you lock it in, you move on, and you keep moving to another company. Now, this idea can be explained by saying, for example, hey, hold on to your losers and basically 
cut your winners off, okay? It's kind of like saying if you have a garden, whenever flowers are blooming, you take them fast, and whenever weeds are coming up, you leave them in there. It's terrible financial advice, okay? And here's why. Because if you have a company that you're investing into, again, these are not just little digits and blips on the screen. These are companies, like real companies. So if you have a company that you bought into and you've made over 15% on it and you look at the company and it is improving, it has a lot of perspective for the future. It's going to keep growing. It's earning money. There's all the facts to there. Are you going ahead? Are you going to go ahead and basically cut that company off right now? The answer is no, of course not. And on top of that, if you own a company and it goes down, but all the all the facts are showing that hey this company is improving it's becoming more efficient it's having more sales are you going to sell it the answer is no you know my response should have been hey that's that doesn't sound like common sense at all okay because it's not common sense to use these little dumb rules of rule of thumbs is terrible advice people use these rules whenever it comes to day trading because they want to basically limit their losses but when it comes to real life investing for the long term you never want to do that now let me break my heart for myself right now and tell you some of my craziest losses i bought etsy in 2017 back then for around 13, I think, dollars, something like that, or maybe 14, and I sold it for a 15% profit. That could have made me 10 to 15 times my money. I was mad. I also bought Walmart back then, and that could have made me between 5 to 10x my money. I also bought another company, which I won't mention because I'm looking at right now, but just know there were so many stupid mistakes because I follow these stupid rule of thumbs. And lastly, I did lose money on GoPro. And when I bought GoPro, guess what I did when the company went down? I didn't go back and analyze it and say, hey, this company is terrible. It sells a product that has no other ways to actually make the company more money. And when people buy the product, they don't actually use it anymore. They basically just use it once, throw it away, and that's not what you want in a product. And I knew it. I knew it that I didn't know it back then and I know now. So you want to avoid that. When a company sucks, and it's going down, you sell it because it sucks. But if a company is good and solid and if it's going down and you know the value, and that's the most important thing. Do you know the value of the company? The answer is you're buying more because you're buying it at a cheaper price. Now, number three, guys, if I was a president, honestly, I would probably put my mentor in jail and then pardon him after like 20, 30 years for all the money he cost me. But he told me basically, tell me, once the stock goes over $100, it's too expensive. Then <laughs> he told me, if it's below $100, then it's okay, you can buy. Now, this logic, I get it, you know, because the logic is back then, whenever you were buying shares, you could only buy one full share. So buying one or two shares was kind of like, oh, that's not a big deal, not a lot of potential for growth here whatever but in reality is such a stupid idea and here's why because no matter the price you buy a stock if it goes to zero you still lose a hundred percent of all of your money so the big deal is basically if you have a company that's selling for over a hundred dollars and by the way the company I wanted to buy back then it was over a hundred dollars okay and it would have made me so much money today but this stupid logic kept me from making a good decision. Because again, these rule of thumbs make absolutely no sense. A stock cannot be expensive. It cannot be cheap just based on the price. It has to be on the value, okay? The value of the actual company. That's what you basically want to look at. And if you ask me, Tommy, how do you know the value of a company? Well, the way I assume value is based on the future cash flows and discounting it against basically how much money I want to generate on my money. Okay, that sounds complicated and it's gonna be complicated because it sounds like a lot. But if you wanna learn how to do that, you wanna read a book called The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. And that book breaks everything down there. But that's what you wanna use. And the idea is how much money do I have to invest into this company? And then from the money I invest into this company, how much money is this company going to make me over the next, until the company basically expires, okay? How much will I make? And if the answer is more than you invest today, then it's probably gonna be a good investment dependent on the price it's selling for right now. That's the logic. So whenever you're buying a company, it's not based on the, oh my gosh, it's over 100 or it's under 100. Because if you're buying a company that's over $100, but has good expectations for growth and basically earnings and everything like that, and you buy another company that's like $50 and it's cheaper, right? Because it's less of a price. And then this company sucks and it's not going anywhere. You're still going to lose money. That's not what you want. It's based on the quality of the investments, not the price 
of or the dollar tag of the investment, okay? But you don't want to overpay for an investment, and that's a fact. Now, number four here is a piece of advice that I got that I'm very happy I did not know how to take advantage of. And here's why. My mentor told me, not with stocks, but with real estate. He told me, Tommy, use OPM. Use other people's money. This way, if all you have is, for example, $100, you can basically use this money to get more money from a bank or from an investor, and you can leverage that money and make even more money. Now, in stocks, this is called basically buying on margin. And the idea is you can leverage the stocks you have right now to buy more stocks. And if the stock goes up in price, you can sell and then profit from the profit. But if the stock goes down to a certain level, well, the brokerage company will take your investments and sell them off to pay for the money that you basically took from them, okay? That's the idea. Now, the big problem is that you maximize your profits because you're able to buy more of what's working with other people's money and make more money off of it, obviously. But the bad thing is that if things don't work out, you also maximize your losses. You take on more risk, obviously. So, for example, okay, um, the wrong thing with this, and it's not to say that it's wrong because you can hedge and stuff like that, but I'm just not interested in it. But overall, the bad idea here is that the best time in the stock market is whenever the stock market has a recession, we have a correction, we have a depression, or the market is just down overall. That's the moment as investors that you usually want to look forward to because it usually means stocks are going to be at bargain prices, selling at a discount. That's what that means, okay? So if when that happens, you're worried about, I'm going to get a margin call. That means the broker is going to call you and say, hey, your stocks are down. We have to sell your investments if you don't add in more money. And if 50% down market basically means you get fully wiped out. And that can happen, okay? Happened in the past. Now, I'll give you an example here of someone that's smarter than me and probably smarter than you, and it was Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger's friend. I forgot what his name was. Maybe Tim. Maybe too close to my name, okay? That's not going to be me. But he basically got a margin call, and he had to sell his Berkshire Hathaway stock to Warren at a very attractive price because he had to go ahead and get cash to basically avoid them wiping him out completely. The idea is why take on extra risk? We can do things step by step and allow compound interest to basically work for you. You know, um, Warren became a millionaire by the age of 30, I think it was, and he became a billionaire by the age of 50 something. It takes time for all these things to come into play. It takes time. You gotta be patient in this game. Now, number five is never invest money you'll need for something else. You know, the idea, I hear this stupid idea all the time. People that raise your expenses so high to force themselves to make more money. It sounds like a very good way to go broke when times don't go your way. Now, here's my problem. When I invested my first $10,000 into those, I think it was four or five investments, if I had left that money there, I would have had over $100,000 in that portfolio. And that would have been very attractive if you asked me, even with the loss I had from two of those companies, but the other three did well, even this like two did well, I would have still tripled or quadrupled my money. That's how good it is, okay? That's the rule of five, by the way, if you don't know that. But overall, the idea is because I needed that money, I had to take my money out and take a quick profit, pay taxes and all that stuff. But if you invest the money that you basically don't need right now, you can leave that money in there to do the work you needed to do. And that's the most important thing. Tommy, by the way, what did you need the money for? I needed it to, to buy clothes and a computer and spend it on and spend it on you know girls and stuff like that i'm being honest you know back then i wasn't the same tommy i've made mistakes before i've made almost all these mistakes to the margin call and that's what i'm telling you you want to avoid these things i know how it's like i know what it's like okay you don't you don't want to do this stuff because you can basically avoid these mistakes and have so much more money now lastly before i leave here guys and you made it all the way to the, end of the video i want you to comment down below stock so I know you made it all the way to the end of the video and that you're a real person. But overall, the last thing I want to give you guys is this very powerful quote I got from this book. And it's called Art, Science, and Legwork. That's what investing is. It's an art, it's a science, and it's also legwork. Now, the art part of it is basically you looking around for investments and having the ability to kind of see in the future and kind of have an imaginative idea of what this company is going to do. The science is looking at the balance sheet, looking at the income statement, and having to basically look at the logical points of view to make a decision. And then the legwork is doing this over and over again, because when you're trying to be an investor, you're basically looking at 10 companies, you're finding maybe one, maybe 100 companies, maybe finding like 10. So it's like a lot of work 
a lot of work and you might go on for a year or two years without making a proper investment because basically things are too expensive. But the overall idea is it takes work. It just can't be like, I like the company, I, I buy what I buy and that's it. No, it has to be that plus logic and then plus you doing the work. Because a lot of people just use logic and they just buy based on the facts and they never usually make money. But the people that combine all these things together, those are the people that usually make the most money when it comes to investing. Guys, I hope this video helped you out a ton. I hope you had fun learning from mistakes and hearing these stories. Um, I wish I avoided all of them. And if, again, if I was the president, my mentor would be in jail right now. I haven't been there for at least 60 days. No, 15 days. <laughs> having 15 days in there, be like, oh, you know, remember that 15% rule? There you go. 15 days in jail for you, sir. As always, guys, by the way, he, he's doing great. He got, he, I think he, I think he's doing great. He got like um, some properties and stuff like that, and he's doing awesome. And this man, you know, you don't have to be that perfect in the game to have good success as long as you do some things correct. And that's what I love about investing. You know, in this game, if you're right six out of ten times, you still do pretty good. But, but most people aren't. So learn, learn the game. All right, guys, as always, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified. Comment down below any questions. On top of that, up here is another video. And over here is my face. Let's subscribe. And as always, long-term team, officially out.